Ostend on the north coast of Belgium is primarily popular because of its long sandy beach facing the North Sea and a waterfront promenade that goes for three miles. The city also has a lovely pedestrian zone shopping area in the center, a great place for people watching or dog watching. There's a large church with Gothic style architecture and you can take a free ferry ride in the harbor. There's also the world's longest tram line running along the entire North Shore of Belgium, from the Netherlands to France. In town, you can also stroll through a beautiful green park with ponds and streams. Austin makes a perfect day trip from Bruges, only 15 minutes away by train. So if you are staying in Bruges for a couple of days, it's fun to hop on the train and come on up to Austin. The train station in Bruges is almost two kilometers away from the central market square, so it's easy to just take the city bus to get over to the train. It's a short, friendly bus ride, and you'll get to see a little bit more of Bruges as you make your way over to the station. Later, when you return to Bruges, take the same bus back into the city center. There are four departures every hour, so you don't even have to look at a train schedule. Just catch the next departing train. It's such a fast ride, only 15 minutes to Austin, you hardly have time to look out the window for scenery. Upon arrival at the Austin train station, it's an easy walk into the center of town just minutes away. Belgium has an excellent train system with connections throughout the country, and the price is reasonable. This only costs about eight euro. We'll be taking a ride on that tram along the coastline later in the program. It's a small city, very easy to get around, but it helps to check with the tourist information for some travel tips, which we will be sharing with you now and throughout the program. When you arrive in Austin, right next to the station, there's a, a really nice church. There's also a marina next to the station. The Amandine is also there. That's a boat who was used by um, fishermen that went to Iceland to catch a lot of fish in the old days. The casino in Austin is also a nice feature. You have the Royal Galleries next to it. It's really nice to have a stroll along the beach, along the galleries. We'll get you up to that beachfront promenade in a few minutes, but first we'll be walking by the marina and into the heart of downtown. Because it's located along the coastline, the city has always had a maritime tradition, starting back in the 10th century when it began as a humble fishing village. Now the marina is a harbor for expensive yachts with modern apartment buildings all around it. Our walk is starting out from the train station and marina right through the center of downtown. It's a three kilometer walk or about two miles. So you could do this entire length in about one hour or slow down and take a couple of hours. Right away we see the big church with its Gothic style towers and in my visit, I was lucky to run into some free refreshments, non-alcoholic mocktails, cool and refreshing, at a price that can't be beat. The neo-Gothic Church of St. Peter and Paul began construction in late 19th century and was completed in 1907 with stained glass windows, pointed arches and soaring ceilings. We begin our city center walk behind the church getting into the pedestrian zone where we've got some interesting architecture, lots of shops and restaurants, and plenty of people out strolling. Right away, we get to the main pedestrian street of town, Koppelstraat, or Chapel Street, dates back to the 12th century when it functioned already as a commercial center filled with small craft shops and much later evolving into this hub for brand names and larger stores. Along with the side streets branching off from it, this is a shopper's paradise, offering a diverse mix of high-end designer stores and charming local boutiques. You can find everything from fashion and accessories to home goods, souvenirs, and delicious treats. While people watching is fun, it's also delightful to see the Belgians out walking their dogs, all kinds of dogs up and down this lane, some of whom are lovingly pampered getting hand carried so they don't have to work out with their little legs. In addition to shopping, you'll find a variety of cafes, restaurants, bars, and eateries where you can enjoy delicious Belgian cuisine. 
That street brings us to Wappen Plain, which has been a marketplace ever since the 12th century. Now with some restaurants, many with outdoor dining on the terrace and a regular street market. While walking along the main shopping street of Kuppelstraat, it's also fun to branch off and look at some of the side lanes. There's actually a pedestrian zone that extends out in several directions. You'll even see an enclosed galleria designed in that typical Belgian style, providing welcome shelter if you're here in the winter. Back on that main street that will bring us right to the sunny beach. Our visit was in September and it was quite warm. A good day for a stroll in the sand, a little sunbathing and a dip in the water. Or maybe just sit on one of those comfortable benches along the promenade and enjoy the view. You can rent a pedal cart that can carry up to four people. Maybe you're pampered and can relax in your own private carriage. That promenade has a smooth paved surface that makes mobility easy for everybody, including the seniors who are out to enjoy the fresh air. Another comfortable way people spend time here is at their private cabanas. Austin became a fashionable seaside resort in the middle and late 19th century with the arrival of the railway and good ferry connections to England, attracting visitors from across Europe with its beaches, casinos, and grand hotels. And that trend continues throughout the 20th century and right up till today where it remains a very popular tourist destination. Europe's very first train line extended from Brussels to Ostend in 1838, stimulating tourism and international trade from the harbor, with the first ferry connecting to England in 1846. Wealthy Belgians began constructing huge mansions and grand hotels along the beach. The Belgian royal family liked to spend their holidays in Ostend in the 19th century, which attracted their aristocratic friends. With the increase of mass tourism by the middle of the 20th century, most of those grand old buildings were replaced by the modern wall of apartments and hotels along the beach. This large building on the promenade is a casino and concert hall. It's a multi-purpose venue, good for gambling, dining, and musical events in a 2,000-seat auditorium. The first course hall opened here in 1852, but was destroyed during World War II and then rebuilt afterwards. Two blocks away, you'll get to this floral clock, which is the entrance to Leopold Park that was laid out in 1860 on the site of the Old Town fortifications. Its serpentine lake provides a serene backdrop for leisurely walks along winding pathways passing the lush greenery and manicured lawns and little streams, creating a tranquil atmosphere featuring benches and seating areas where visitors can relax and take in the natural surroundings. A block away, we see an equestrian statue of King Leopold I, and then two blocks further, King Leopold II on a horse above the arcades. These arches and columns are part of the Royal Galleries, finished in 1905, extending about 400 meters along the waterfront, with pavilions, restaurants, and the luxurious Therme Palace Hotel. In front of the galleries, you'll find Ostend's largest collection of beach cabanas. These little cabins provide an oasis for beachgoers, with some shelter from the sun right in the heart of the city turning the sandy beach into an outdoor living room where people can relax and socialize. The Osten Beach is seven kilometers long and extends for many kilometers beyond the city all along the Belgian coast, which is about 68 kilometers in total length, much of it sandy beach. Our tourist information guide suggested we take a tram. When you're at the beach, you can take the coastal tram it's, uh, it takes you from the Dutch border to the French border. It's like the longest tram, uh, tram line in the world. You'll have a great view of the beach from that tram. It would take about two and a half hours to travel the entire distance, 68 kilometers long with 67 stops. However, you can just take a shorter segment. You can go to Middelkerke. 
It's a, it's a short ride. It takes you along the coast. So you're sitting in the tram, you can see the beach, you can see the sea. It's an attraction on its own, I think. It only takes 30 minutes from Royal Galleries to Middlekerka, and along that segment is the fascinating sight of the Atlantic Wall. You see those bunkers with cannons sticking out, built by German invaders in World War II. We'll get a better look on our return trip. Big Ferris wheels are so popular, they even have them at this remote location at De Griefplein. Coming into Middlekerka, where we shall get off the tram, then catch the return tram back to Ostend. Arriving in Middlekerka, it's a town with a population of about 18,000 people, with a lot of the usual attractions. There are shops, restaurants, and some hotels. That brand new casino under construction is now open. You don't have to wait very long for the next tram because they come every 10 or 20 minutes depending on the timing and the season. We return the same way that we came heading back to Ostend. The coast tram was started in 1885 as a short line, later developing to its full length, making these coastal towns easily accessible. We've gotten back to the Atlantic Wall, the bunkers built by the Germans first in World War I and then later when they occupied in World War II. That was a very nice tram one hour round trip and now we're back to the marina in Ostend with a different view of that beautiful marina and into the train station where we could connect back to Bruges but instead we're walking over to the ferry to get a free ride in the harbor. It's so easy to get out of the tram which is right at street level. You don't have to deal with steps at all. Exiting the tram at the train station, you could easily get on a connecting train bringing you back to Bruges or wherever you came from, but instead take a short boat ride. You have a free uh, ferry. It takes you from uh, main town of Ostend to Osterufer. It's called uh, Easter Shore. It's a fun little boat ride, especially because it's free and only 500 meters away from the train station to get to the ferry dock. You don't need a ticket and there are no reservations taken, so you just wait online for the next boat. They come about every 15 minutes or so. Maybe you'll get lucky in your timing and walk right on. Or if you're here in the busy summer season, you might have to wait for two or three boats before you have a chance to board. Back in the 12th century, the first small harbor was built here with the construction of a dike protecting it from the sea. In the following centuries, the harbor became so important that it was attacked by the Spanish in 1601, who ultimately destroyed the port, but it was rebuilt soon after, demonstrating its strategic importance, which continued right through the 17th and 18th centuries. The role of Ostend as a major freight harbor expanded greatly after 1722. Until that time, Antwerp had been the main harbor port for Belgium, but the Dutch closed Antwerp down in 1722, which accelerated the rising prominence of the Ostend Harbor. Passenger ferries connected Ostend to England ever since 1846, with a large amount of cargo and ferry services right throughout the 20th century. But recently they stopped running because of the Channel Tunnel primarily connecting England with the continent directly. Now tourism rather than shipping has become the most important part of the Ostend economy. This little ship with its capacity of 50 passengers is part of the only ferry company left in Ostend. Just being out on the water in this open air boat enjoying those maritime scenes is quite worthwhile. Within 15 minutes, you've arrived at the dock on the other side, where you get off and take a little walk, or maybe ride your bicycle. On the map, you can see the short boat route with its little loop over to the other dock, then have a look at some sites, including that lighthouse, a fortified German bunker from World War II, and Fort Napoleon, built by that emperor during his conquests. There's also a very long sandy beach on this side and a promenade that you could walk on down to the next town, Bredena. Or just take a quick walk and reboard the next boat coming through. You'll soon be back where you started at the Ostend Dock. <laughs> 
then it's that short walk back to the train station and you're on your way. You can see how Austin makes a very easy and entertaining day trip from Bruges, offering yet another reason why when you're visiting Bruges, you should stay for at least two nights, maybe three, so that you've got time to see the city of Bruges and come on up to Ostend, the beautiful beach town of Belgium. You could also get to Brussels by train in 80 minutes. We have lots more movies about Belgium and the rest of Europe, so have a look at them in our collection. We frequently upload new movies, so please subscribe to our channel and click that little alarm bell so you'll be notified. And if you enjoyed the movie, how about a thumbs up? And we always welcome comments down below. Or if you have questions about the destination, make note and we'll answer them. Thanks for watching.